This is the Ryzen Z1 Extreme Powered Legion Go S, and on the channel we test a lot of different handhelds. I've got a bunch of them laying around, but I do find myself gravitating towards this device. Out of the box, run Steam OS. We've got the Z1 Extreme and 32 gigs of RAM with an 8 inch 120 hertz VRR display. In my opinion, it's the best device that runs SteamOS out of the box to compete with the Steam Deck right now. And there's a lower end Legion Go S, but that one I always kind of stay, stay away from. We've got the Z1 Extreme here, eight cores, 16 threads. It is packing more performance than the Steam Deck, and it's certainly not without its issues. But recently on the channel, I showed off lossless scaling running on the Steam Deck. I made a full tutorial. If you want to check that out, link is in the description. It works pretty decently on the Steam Deck, but we're limited by the APU power here. But with something that has a more powerful APU, let's say the Z1 Extreme, you can see much better performance. And I'll tell you what, with lossless scaling installed on the Legion Go S with that Z1 Extreme, it turns it into a whole nother device. So again, I do find myself gravitating towards the Legion Go S even before lossless scaling was available on it. And there's a few things I really like about it. First up, ergonomics. I mean, this is definitely the most comfortable handheld on the market still. There's a bunch of them out there that I've tested. I found nothing that just feels like this in the hand. It also has those locking triggers around back. Not something I usually mess around with. I just leave them opened up. But we also have a much larger display. It's an 8 inch IPS. Doesn't look as good as something like the Steam Deck OLED, but going from a seven inch display, which we see on a lot of handhelds nowadays, up to an eight is a huge jump. And even going from the 7.4 OLED display up to this does make a big difference. But there are a couple things that I don't like here. The first one is very minor. You can see I've got some RGB going and it's fully controllable using a third party application, but we don't have any controllability over that RGB through SteamOS just yet. Hopefully that changes, but I've been waiting. I haven't seen anything yet. But the biggest issue with this Legion Go S is the price. This thing is much more expensive than the Steam Deck. I bought this day one at Best Buy when it was released in the US. And since we have the Z1 Extreme version, it was $829. There are some open box ones for $750, but it's still pretty high given that we've only got the Z1 Extreme and we've seen other devices on the market with that for quite some time now. So with that out of the way, I want to show you how well lossless scaling works on the Legion Go S with the Z1 Extreme. What I'm going to do is just plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. The first game I wanted to show off here was Elden Ring, and this is one I usually run at around 25 watts, low settings, 900p. But right now we're at 900p high settings, only at an 18 watt TDP. I definitely want to get as much battery life out of this thing, so this is exactly how I've been running the game. We're not at 60 FPS. I mean, we're just not going to hit it. And even with this thing at around 35 watts, low settings, 900p, we still get those dips under 60. And real quick, I'll show you that we're at an 18 watt TDP. And now what I'm going to do is enable lossless scaling. So this is a game, again, it doesn't support native frame generation. So we can't use uh, FSR frame gen with this or anything, but lossless scaling will work across the board. And on the built-in screen, I mean, this game feels absolutely amazing. This is one of those games that does kind of lock down at 60 FPS. I'm sure there's mods out there that allow you to take it up. But you can see we're over 70 FPS on average now. And it's still a bit early for lossless scaling in SteamOS. And it's still a bit early for lossless scaling in SteamOS. Hopefully the original developer does release kind of a plug-in and everything. I think we will see better performance out of it down the road. But with what we've got right now using the third-party plug-in with the application, it works great on this setup. The next game I want to show off here is Oblivion Remastered, and this one has always given us issues on these iGPUs. I'm not using any frame generation right now, and you can see the sword. We've got some ghosting going on. This has been something that I've seen a lot in SteamOS and even Windows on lower end systems like we have now. And I'm just at 900p medium settings with FSR set to performance. But I'm going to enable the built-in FSR frame generation. That way we can kind of compare it to lossless scaling. So we'll go ahead and get this on. And now our frame rate's going to jump up pretty decently. And before I was able to install lossless scaling in SteamOS, I would play this game at around 25 watts with these same settings. It did perform a bit better, but again, we wanted to kind of keep that wattage down to get better battery life out of it. 
So you can see it still dips under with uh, the built-in FSR frame generation on. Before we enable lossless scaling, I'll have to turn off FSR frame gen from the setting. So I'll do that now. Okay, with it off, drops down to a little under 40 FPS. We'll just go ahead and take it to 2X. You could try 4X, but I guarantee it's not gonna work very well. There'll be a lot of ghosting going on. Maybe at a really high TDP plugged into the wall, you might see some decent performance in some games, but 2X is kind of the sweet spot here. And you can see in some cases, I mean, this does jump up to around 80 FPS. The final game I wanted to show off was Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1080 medium. I've got FSR set to balanced here. Not horrible, but we're only at an 18 watt TDP. Now the built-in frame gen with this game works pretty decently, but you do have to restart the game. So we're just gonna test out lossless here, but even without any frame generation at 18 watts, I mean, we're seeing an average of around 40 FPS. Not horrible and on the built-in screen with VRR enabled, it's a pretty decent experience. But without wasting any more battery, we can get more out of it here with lossless scaling. We'll take it to 2x, and that's going to take us on up there. So we can get over 70 FPS on average with this game now at 18 watts. And if I took it up to 20 watts, same exact settings, we can get over 90 FPS. The dev for lossless scaling has been working a lot on UI and HUD elements. So this is much better than it was in the past. Not a ton of ghosting, but we've got some flickering going on there. Not horrible, but I do think with time and more work from the developer that this could be fixed with most games. And since we're here, we'll just take it down to 900p instead of 1080. And the reason I'm not running at a 16 by 10 aspect ratio with any of this stuff is because this is connected to a game capture and an external monitor. Just lowering that resolution is gonna up that frame rate by quite a bit. Lossless scaling isn't perfect by any means, especially on a handheld like this, but it can breathe new life into some games, and especially games that don't support frame generation, those games where you have to run at a really high TDP to see any decent performance, it might help out. From what I've been testing so far, it's been working great on the Legion Go S, and you can install it on any SteamOS powered device. So if you've got the ROG Ally or the Ally X with SteamOS installed, you can use it over there. And if you end up testing it on any device running SteamOS, let us know how it performs in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I will leave links for everything we talked about in the description below. And let me know if there's anything else you want to see running on the Go S with or without lossless scaling. But like always, thanks for watching.